Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I'm Julian, developer advocate at Stream Native, and today I'll show you a quick overview of Apache Pulsar. For those who don't know Stream Native, Stream Native was founded by the original creators of Apache Pulsar and Bookkeeper. Stream Native is a large contributor to open source, and we offer Stream Native Cloud. This is a fully managed Pulsar service with enterprise features on Stream Native infrastructure or on your own infrastructure. So what is Pulsar in a few words? Pulsar is a cloud native messaging and data streaming platform. Cloud native means that Pulsar is designed for running in containerized environments with Docker or Kubernetes. And cloud native means Pulsar is designed to scale out, to scale horizontally. But it is not only about scalability but also about elasticity. Unlike other data streaming platforms, Pulsar is able to quickly adapt to workload changes, as we will see in this presentation. In this video, I will specifically focus on seven key features that make Pulsar the ideal centralized messaging and streaming platform for your enterprise. Pulsar is a unified messaging and streaming platform. The three levels of scalability and elasticity Pulsar provides. How Pulsar guarantees the durability of your data. Multi-tenancy, geo-replication, compatibility, and the open source community. Let's get started. Data streaming and messaging require a different set of features. What is great with Pulsar is that Pulsar has all of these features. It can process large data streams like Kafka, but Pulsar also provides message broker features like Rabbit and Q, for example. So we can say that Pulsar is the best of both worlds. In other words, with Pulsar, you don't have to choose between messaging and streaming. This is not a dilemma. You can do both using the same platform, the same technology. So we just saw that Pulsar can handle both messaging and streaming use cases. This is one of the key features of Pulsar. Now, let's talk about Pulsar's scalability and elasticity. These are different things. Elasticity means you can grow or shrink resources quickly to adapt to workload changes, so you can save infrastructure costs by avoiding over-provisioning. Some data streaming platforms like Kafka and Pulsar can scale very well. But Pulsar is both scalable and elastic. The scalability requirements are determined by the bottleneck you have to address. If your bottleneck is the number of messages remaining to be consumed in a topic, then you need to add more consumer instances. When the bottleneck is the number of topics or the number of connections with clients, then you need to add more processing power to the Pulsar cluster. And when the bottleneck is the storage capacity, then you need to add more storage capacity to the Pulsar cluster. Now, let's focus on the first item. The bottleneck in data processing often lies with the consumer rather than the broker or the producer. The consumer not only needs to read the data but also process it, and this processing can be resource-intensive, making it the common bottleneck. Suppose you have multiple consumers consuming a topic. What happens if the number of messages to be consumed grows faster than the consumers can process them? With Pulsar, you just have to add new consumers to what we call a shared or key-shared subscription. So you can increase the throughput by adding new consumers. With Kafka, when you need to add a new active consumer, then you need to add a new partition to the topic. For that, you need to perform an operation on the broker side, and you'll also perform a rebalance of the data across the partitions. This can be heavy and lead to performance loss or even downtime, so you have to anticipate and plan carefully. But Pulsar does not have this issue. And, of course, when you have fewer messages, you may end up with underutilized consumers. You can remove them to save infrastructure costs. All of that while preserving the ordering guarantee, unlike traditional messaging brokers. Now, let's suppose the limit is the broker itself. Then you can also scale the broker horizontally without the limits other streaming platforms can have. Now that I explained how easy it is to add new consumers, let's delve into how to scale the broker. But first, I need to explain the unique architecture of Pulsar. This architecture is more sophisticated than other platforms, so it brings many benefits. In Pulsar, you have the broker nodes and the bookie nodes. The broker nodes are responsible for managing all the communication and the processing of the topics. So they are stateless, they don't store data. So a broker node deletion won't impact the data. In contrast, the bookie nodes are responsible for storage. They have state. They store the messages. The bookies are Apache bookkeeper nodes. So let's say that I need more processing power on my cluster, I'll add more brokers. Because their state is stored in the bookkeeper tier, I can add a new broker and that load can then be migrated to another broker. Pulsar will take care of all the moving of connections, and this is transparent to your application. If you compare this to Kafka, then adding a new broker, I would have to manage the movement of all the data to another broker for it to rebalance it. There is no heavy partition rebalance here and no data movement. 
When we need to store more data, then we'll just add more bookies. As soon as you add a new bookie, it's going to be eligible for getting new messages right away. It immediately becomes functional. There is no data rebalance. Pulsar does not have this issue when you need scalability on your data. So here is a recap of the three levels of horizontal scalability and the benefits compared to other streaming platforms. When you do data streaming or messaging, your most common bottleneck is the consumer. The advantage of Pulsar is that scaling consumers doesn't require complex operations like adding partitions. If your bottleneck is the processing power, you just have to add new broker nodes without the need for data movement across nodes. Additionally, if storage capacity is the limiting factor, adding new bookies nodes resolves the issue. And unlike other platforms, these nodes immediately receive new messages. And of course, you can easily downscale to save on infrastructure costs. I just presented how you can scale Pulsar with its multi-layered architecture, which is the second key feature of Pulsar. Now let's talk about the third feature, durability. Topics are made of segments, so Pulsar can distribute them to separate bookies. This is how a single topic is distributed across several data nodes. Here you have a replication factor of three. So every segment is replicated on three different bookies. If I kill one bookie, here the bookie two. I still have all the segments in the other bookies so I haven't lost any data. You may need to store a big amount of data and retain it for a long time. Depending on your use case, you'll need to read messages produced days or months ago. With Pulsar you can offload those messages to external storage. So instead of using fast and expensive disks in the cluster nodes, we can rather leverage the use of third-party cloud storage systems, moving it into a more cost-effective storage tier. And this is transparent for the consumers. If you need to replay a topic, some messages will be read from the cloud storage, and others will be read from the bookie, but the consumer doesn't see this, it's transparent. Now that I presented how your data is stored by Pulsar and how you can offload, let's talk about the multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy allows different departments or teams within an organization to share a Pulsar cluster while keeping their data isolated. Multi-tenancy helps applications work in a shared environment by providing structure, security, and resource isolation. This resource's isolation provides a better security, and sharing resources also allows you to save infrastructure costs. This is not a hack. There is no need for an additional gateway between the client and the broker. Multi-tenancy is a built-in feature. Now I'd like to talk about geo-replication, which is also an amazing Pulsar feature. Geo-replication provides disaster recovery. You have several clusters deployed in different regions or different data centers. If you lose a region, you can recover from it. Pulsar can replicate the data to different regions automatically in a bi-directional way. And this is a built-in feature. So now you could say, Julian, Pulsar has impressive features, but in my company, I have an existing software ecosystem. I'm sending or consuming messages with Kafka and RabbitMQ, I have a bunch of microservices, and I can't rewrite all of them. Well, I have good news for you. Pulsar has a high level of compatibility, and I'll explain that right now. Messaging and streaming involve clients and a broker. They communicate using a protocol. Pulsar provides its own binary protocol. But with the addition of protocol handlers, Pulsar becomes compatible with Kafka clients, RabbitMQ clients, and MQTT clients. By leveraging your existing apps, you can avoid the need to rewrite everything and ensure a seamless migration path. To write client applications, you have many Pulsar client libraries available. You will surely find one for your favorite language. Don't hesitate to check out hub.streamnative.io where you'll find a wide ecosystem of connectors, libraries, and protocol handlers. Pulsar has also a great open source community. All these features I presented are available in open source, so if you download Pulsar, you'll have all of them. This is great because you don't depend on a specific vendor. You're free to call a vendor to provide a Pulsar as a service like Stream Native, or you can manage a Pulsar cluster by yourself. There is no vendor lock-in. There are more than 600 contributors to Pulsar, and there are more making contributions to the ecosystem around Pulsar. The entire Pulsar codebase is growing year over year. The number of Slack members is about to reach 10,000. There is a really rich and growing body of knowledge of questions and suggestions. There are thousands of organizations that are using Pulsar, and it's been really incredible to watch this grow. Here is a quick recap. Pulsar is a unified messaging and streaming platform handling both patterns, both semantics at the same time, so you can have only one platform to manage. 
Pulsar is doing great at both scaling and being elastic, and it provides three levels of elasticity. Pulsar ensures the durability of the data and can offload to external, cheap and unlimited storage. Pulsar is multi-tenant by design. Pulsar has geo-replication built-in, which is great for disaster recovery. Pulsar is compatible with your software ecosystem. And all these great features are available as open source so you have no vendor lock-in. All this makes Apache Pulsar the ideal solution for a centralized data streaming and messaging platform. And that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed the content, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and left a comment. And, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. In the upcoming videos, I'll delve deeper into the features I just showcased, giving you a closer look at what Pulsar has to offer. For more information on Pulsar, feel free to click the link provided in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.